You won't believe it, but this is the future of aviation. Have you seen You're looking at the Pioneer Edition, which can be customized. Most spacious cabin of all EV talks. 30 engines mounted on the flap. It's a single pilot operation. Enjoy this video with all the details where we have Sebastian walk us through the entire aircraft. Last year we were here, there was only a 1 to 43 mock up, and now it's a full scale mock up. With me is Sebastian from Lilium. Sebastian, Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Um, maybe you can tell me what happened since last year. Well, since last year we made a lot of progress on our aircraft and we have launched uh, several editions of the aircraft and you're just facing the Pioneer edition, the higher end edition of our cabin uh, of the Lilium Jet. So I just invite you to come in. So you're looking at a you know, club for configuration. So the seats are facing you know, each other. So you actually have a lot of space on your knees. Um, you have a long cabin. It's one of the longest in its category and a very high ceiling as well. So you're looking at the Pioneer Edition, which can be customized. You know, colors, fabric can be absolutely customized. Um, you have, if you haven't been in, in one of our aircraft, uh, the batteries are on the side of the aircraft. Um, we have the lighting, which can be customized, there is a lot of different options of lighting side. Um, you've got the luggage in the back, which is you know, quite spacious. You can put a lot of different luggage, even the uh, golf clubs. We have made sure that you can actually fit your golf bags in there. Um, and you know, just if you've ever been into a helicopter, this is much more spacious, right? You have you're not shoulders to shoulders. You actually have an alley. Uh, you just got in the aircraft like a jet. You just went in and you turn right and you got into your seat, right? So it's a lot more spacious than any type of vertical transport today. And on top of it, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal from a noise and vibration point of view. There is no rotor on top of you, you know, rotating. It's going to be absolutely quiet with an amazing experience. You can see the window, window line. It's very unique. You have a lot of lights, a lot of space, and we believe that this is going to be a major differentiator. How close is this to your final product in the inside, of course? It's <laughs> extremely close. There is a bit of tweaking. I can tell you that the console, based, based on the feedback we have received, uh, we're going to probably make it slightly shorter. There is tweaking, but this is absolutely very, very close to the final product. The seats, for example, are exactly the seat we're going to have. Of course, like I said, fabrics, color, you know, we went a bit, you know, fun here with the pink, just to show that you can do a lot of customizations. But it is really what you're going to experience. The first flight of the conforming aircraft will happen end of 2024. We are currently building the conforming aircraft, the first conforming aircraft. We are receiving the components. And by the end of the year, we'll start the assembly of what we call MSN-1. And then we're going to be building another six aircraft. You have seven test aircraft, which are going to be flying in 24 and 25 to get certification by the end of 25. So the battery density is 330 watt hour per kilogram. We have roughly one ton of battery in the aircraft, right? This is a 3.2 tons aircraft, and one ton is reserved for the battery side. Roughly speaking, you'll fly 175 kilometers, roughly an hour of flight, go to your destination and, and um, you know, take off vertically and land vertically. Depending on how much you've drained the battery and how much you have to top off, right? So on average, I would say between 30 to 40 minutes. And we're going to have a 350 kilowatt hour charging station, which will take with a CS plug, so you know, typical. And so you'll be able to charge, like I said, mostly, most of the time, 30 to 40. If you've really went down all the way and you have to top it off, maybe 40 to 50. It depends on the conditions, but you know, it's, not, it's absolutely manageable from a turnaround point of view. We're going to be flying quite low, right? So we are going, this aircraft can fly up to 10,000 feet because it's not a pressurized cabin, but you will probably most of the time fly between three to 5,000 feet. And we have 5G, 4, 5G access to the cabin. We may have a repeater to make sure you have uh, the best network. So you'll always be connected through your phone. Is there a mu music system in here or is that not planned? So we are working on a lot of different options, uh, especially for the Pioneer Edition. You can see at the bottom the railing system. The railing system is meant to have a modular system. So let's say you only have three passengers, you may want to remove a seat and have another module instead. It could be your pet cage if you have a pet, it could be um, something else. And we do have options like music, sound proof. We, we have speakers that are going to be used mostly for the communication with the pilot. Um, but we may have other options as well, which we will look into in the next uh, you know, year or so. So you're looking at the cockpit of our aircraft. It is a single pilot operation, there's only one seat. 
However, we see the full fly-by-wire technology, meaning that the computer are getting all of the inputs to the flaps and to the engines. We have three flight computers uh, from Honeywell that will do the, the job. We have inceptors. Uh, we're going to be managing the, the pitch, the roll, the yaw, and, and the power through those um, two inceptors. You have touchscreen displays, and you have all of the latest and greatest avionics uh, from Honeywell. It's called the Anthem um, suite of products, and it includes ADS-B in and out, um, full FMS capabilities, um, and you know really all of the avionics you need to be integrated into the air traffic management system. The next one is really the conforming aircraft builder. Right? You asked me earlier, when are you going to be um, flying the aircraft? Well, we have to first assemble the aircraft, and that's going to happen end of the year. That's a major one. We'll have the aircraft roll out probably Q1 next year, and then we'll start doing the ground test. So now I have to say every milestone is quite important, um, and we're looking forward to seeing this uh, aircraft fly because it's, first of all, we're getting firm orders, and there's a lot of interest on in our aircraft, and, and we are getting closer and closer now to being able to demonstrate um, that you know, our aircraft is compliant with regulation and we can be certified. So as you can see already, you do not have an open rotor, whether it's electric or it's thermal. It is a wing, a canard, and 30 engines mounted on the flap. From a safety point of view already, you're looking at 30 engine, it's not an open rotor, you have wings, you know, it's much more um, as a conventional aircraft. Of course, you have take off, taken off vertically, but it's still a lot more, uh, I would say, from a public point of view, um, from, uh, absolutely more acceptable than flying in the open water technology. That's number one. Number two, the cabin. The cabin is actually the most spacious cabin of all EV talks. And you can actually experience it right now. It's very long, you have plenty of space. You can actually have a table also, you can pull out and you can work. It's a lot like you're in your private jet. And the other ones are much more like a helicopter Electric, electrified. And we are absolutely different from the architecture point of view. That gives us the cabin space, it gives us extra range, and it gives us the wing and the canard, the safety aspect of it, which is very important in the segment we are dealing with. So we have a clear two phase approach. The first phase is to sell our aircraft to private individuals. Uh, and to charter services, fractional ownership. So really the premium market of people that are using today private jets, private helicopters, or charter services. Once we, and we're gonna sell that aircraft, right? We're gonna sell the aircraft as a regular OEM. Then we will enter the mass market. So we're gonna come with a six seater, because as, as you can see, there's tons of space. You can actually flip those seats right here and have six seats all together. And so now you can do a shuttle configuration with high frequencies and high operations and get to much lower uh, cost point. Once you do this, you, are, you enter the mass market. For the mass market, we are absolutely looking at both, uh, either selling, depending on the region of the world you are, you have to be facing what you can do in that country and if you have to have a partner, or if you want to sell your tickets yourself. Both are absolutely open to us. Sebastian, thank you very much for this tour and uh, until next year, maybe outside. Absolutely, we'd love to. Great, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And for you, as always, like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.